Today we're going to be solving 2021 AMC 12B problem 23. Three balls are randomly and independently tossed into bins numbered, but positive integers so that the ball for each ball. Probability in bin i is 2 to the negative i. So for example, if i is 3, the probability is 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth. That's just an example just to give you a sense of what's going on. And a fun fact is that we covered a problem with similar notation. The problem itself was much easier, but had similar like outside. So you can go check that out if you're interested. And we're saying that more than one ball is allowed in each bin. And then they're saying that the balls end up in evenly spaced distinct bins is P over Q. Find that. And either, I think it's kind of weird to say that, oh, more than one ball is allowed in each bin, but then they end up in distinct bins. So maybe that's, they're just trying to trick you there. So basically here, what we're saying is that, or actually no, the, the more than one ball is each bin is for the denominator. So that's going to be meaning for the overall probability Basically, the overall probability is just going to be 1 times 1 times 1. So really, we have to worry about the numerator, which is the beginning expression. So here, and to give an example, for example, evenly spaced, 3, 17, and 10 does work. And notice here that they flip-flop the order, 3, 17, 10. That means we're going to have to multiply by ordering at the end of the problem. So what I'd like to do, if you remember in the silly mistakes video, is I'd like to write a big multiply by 3 factorial. So I, I won't forget it. So I won't forget to multiply by 3 factorial at the end because I'm doing for the ordering of the three balls can be, let's say we choose 1, 4, and 7. This is going to be the 1, 4, 7, 3 factorial permutations of that. So make sure I'll remember that at the end of the problem. So now let's look at the actual problem. What are the possibilities? Ignoring order because we're going to multiply for that. You can have 1, 2, 3, for example, right? Because you can just have in balls 1, 2, and 3. Or what we can also do is we can say that 1, 2, and 3 works. But let's shift everything down by one half. Two, three, four. Three, four, five. So on. That's one case, because then each one is plus one, plus one. We're basically shifting it down by one. And the reason is that if you're shifting each ball down by one, let's say we move it from ball two to ball three. Ball two, the probability is one fourth, one over two squared. And ball three is one over two to the three, one over eight. So it's one half times the probability in ball two. So basically, by shifting everything down by one, we're multiplying all of the probabilities by half. So overall probability will be one eighth times the original probability. Firstly, what's the probability of this happening? That's just going to be one half times one fourth plus times one eighth, which is one over sixty four. And the probability of this happening is going to be one over eight times one over sixty four. So since the probability is one eighth, one eighth, one half, one half. And the probability of this happening is 1 8th times 1 over 64 times an additional 1 8th since we shifted everything down by an additional 1. Noticing anything familiar, 1 over 64 plus 1 8th times 1 64 plus 1 8th times 1 8th times 1 over 64. Yes, it's an infinite geometric sequence. So it's going to be a over 1 minus r, which is equal to 1 over 64 over 56 over 64, which is 1 over 56. Great. So if this infinite geometric sequence idea is a little bit confusing to you, what you can actually notice is that basically what this is also, another way that you could also put it is you can actually write it in terms of the probabilities of it happening and the probabilities of the shifted down versions of it happening. So that could also maybe give you what, tell you what would actually be going on in this problem as well, hopefully. Okay. Yeah, basically what I was saying is that we can see that p is equal to 1 over 64 plus 1 8 p. Basically, what this is saying is the probability in this kind of phase is going to be 1 over 64, probability of this happening, plus now we're essentially shifting everything down by 1 8, and then we're adding back 1 8, whatever that quantity is, if that makes sense. Because basically, what we're doing here is that we're just shifting everything down by 1, which makes it, which makes it 1 8 times the value. So we're, we add that 1 8 p back. That's why it was going to be P, the probability in this whole overall case, is going to be the probability of this happening plus one eighth the probability of anything of the, the same thing happening again, because there's just going to be the probability of all these things happening, which is, again, the same thing as the probability of what we originally find it times one half cubed. And that's another way you can find P to be 1 over 56. Just another interesting idea to look at the problem with. So then what we can do is that 
we can see that this is the possibilities here 156 now 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 what can we do now is this it is this it no it's not because we also have something like 135 246 3 three five no, three five seven etc or we can have one four seven two five eight etc same thing so is there any way we can somehow relate these to our previous possibilities well notice that in this case they're separated by two so the probability of this happening is going to be one eighth the probability of this this whole these all these cases happening because the probability of the second ball being in, in, row, in bin 3 is 1 over 8, 1 over 2 cubed. Probability of the second ball being in bin over 2 is 1 over 2 squared. So the probability of it actually happening is going to actually be, it's going to be 1 over 8. It's going to be 1 over 8 divided by 1 over 4, or 2 times less likely. So 2 times less likely for the second ball. And it's going to be actually be 2 squared, or 4 times as likely for this third ball. So overall, it's eight times less likely than this one, two, three case in the top. So it's going to be have a probability of five, one over five, twelve. And then these next possibilities will just be the same thing. The po this possibility here is going to be one eighth probability compared to this possibility here. So so on. So basically, the sum of all these possibilities, which is one over fifty six, times one over eight, times one over eight, will be the sum of all the probability of all these possibilities happening by the infinite geometric series, basically same infinite geometric series as earlier, except everything one eighth smaller. So this is going to be one over, or let's not evaluate it. And now what about these next possibilities separated by three? These next possibilities will have a probability of, again, same thing, we're shifting it down by an additional factor of eight, because the second ball is shifted by one more, third is shifted by two more, overall shifted by one over 32 more. So, sorry, one over four, yeah, it's going to be shifted by additional one over eight factor, because one half times one fourth. So it's going to be 156 times eight squared. And so on. We just evaluate this whole thing out. And then we can do this by the infinite geometric series formula to be one over, over 56 over one minus one over eight, which is going to be one over 56 over seven eighths, which is going to be one over 49. And remember, multiply by three factorial. So six times over 49 is going to be the answer and that gives 55 and that's the answer for this problem but before we end it let's look at another approach to this problem just like we did this p equation for this now let's say that another way if you don't want to use infinite geometric series the q the probability of it happening the whole thing happening is equal to p whatever the p was so 1 over 56 plus now the remaining probabilities is just going to be equal to 1 8 times the original probability. So Q, because we're shifting everything, the probability of the remaining possibilities is overall going to be 1 8, because we're essentially having the same sequence except 1 8 times down, because the second term is divided by 2, third term divided by 4. So it's going to be the same thing except 1 8 of that quantity. And here we can again get that Q will be, we can again solve for the value and see that Q will be equal to the same quantity, 1 over 49. So both methods work. When I did this first, I used the infinite ge geometric series method, but the other method also will work fine. So again, to recap the key steps, we broke it down case by case and noticed some patterns in the infinite geometric series applications or the equation application as well. And then from there, we remember this thing, don't forget it. They literally give you an example. Remember from one of the other solutions on the AMC 10, I mentioned that when they give you an example, even if you think you understand the problem, read it. Cause you might remember that, oh, there's also other orderings you have to remember. So it's always good to read those examples that they give in the problem sometimes. So multiply by three factorial, and then we get our possibility that we can get, which is six over 49. I think this is a really cool problem on the test. And I think it was still probably a bit easy for 23 on 18 12, but still a cool problem nonetheless. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope to see you all in next time.